at about 380 years BC, Plato wrote the most famous story in the history of philosophy. It is about knowledge, what it is, how we get it, and how we pass it on. It is an allegory about a cave with some captive prisoners. These are the components of Plato's cave story. First, chained prisoners forced to look straight at the shadows on a wall. Second, some artists use light from a fire and different objects to produce the shadows on the wall of the cave. Third, a pathway leading to the outside world where the sun shines. The story is this. One of the prisoners gets loose, notices the trick with the fire, and walks out. It takes a while to get used to the bright sunlight, but soon the sun allows him to see the world with much more detail. One modern example of Plato's cave setting is a movie theater with a projector showing the movie on a screen and people watching. The movie audience is not much different from the prisoners. The case prisoners knew nothing but a world of shadows, and moviegoers accept all sorts of fantastic stories. In this sense, moviegoers become prisoners for the duration of the movie. Plato knew nothing about modern neuroscience, but the allegory has stood the test of time. The reason is that we now know that our intelligence works by making and constantly updating maps inside our heads. Who we are, where we are, what is all around us. Unknown to Plato was another neuroscientific fact. What we see at a a given moment is the result of a negotiation going on inside our skull. On the one hand, the result of what you expect to see, and on the other, what the incoming signals carry. Every image is built from dozens of neural networks working at the same time. Some see black and white, some distinguish shapes and borders, others add color, texture, etc. We are constantly imagining our surroundings. This means we are constantly rebuilding the world we reproduce in the 3D theater we have inside our head. Our skull is our cave. Some of these images, like our self-image, are built over time and become hardwired and difficult to change. The second lesson from Plato's cave is that nobody can be taught anything against his or her will. Third, when you refuse to continue learning and your mental structures are shut to the outside world, it's exactly as if you become a prisoner of your own previously acquired mental images. Plato and his pupil Aristotle were the first to talk about kibernetica, the art and science of the pilot, which later became better known as cybernetics, the science of control through the use of communications. When cybernetics turned into a scientific paradigm using models to acquire knowledge, very, very different from Newtonian science, then the role of the observer became crucial in understanding complex systems. That is the reason why Plato's cave continues to be very useful, because it forces us to realize that we choose the world or the system we want to see, and we may be unaware that we're cutting out all that we ignore is out there. Plato's cave is there to remind us that even scientists are prisoners of their own education. Sad but true, Many young scientists devoted to complex systems do not realize 
that they are working within the cybernetic science paradigm. That is why Plato's Cave is still very useful. Thanks for watching.